All right, so if you've been following us on Twitter, then you know that we finished the CPU finally about five years later from when we started the whole CPU series, um, which you guys can check out here. Um, but yeah, it's finally done. So what I thought we'd do today is give a sort of a cool demo of what the CPU can do, sort of a show off. Um, I've got a cool, neat little program, a Fibonacci sequence calculating program uh, planned up, so that'll be happening soon. And then after that, I thought that we'd do a little top-down discussion of how the CPU is working so we can learn just to really briefly about how all these modules are sort of talking with each other and interacting to give us this great result of this computer, which is able just to pretty much do anything um, in a really abstract sense. So without further ado, just let me go ahead and program in uh, the Fibonacci program into this computer so we can get started with that demo and the rest of this video. Um, so without further ado, let's just go ahead and run this and we'll see what we get. Go ahead and start the clock. Okay, so you guys can see that it stopped. I stopped at 233. Um, and that's because 233 is the greatest value that this computer can handle. Actually, it's 256 because we have 8 bits, but the next number in the Fibonacci sequence would be greater than that. So I stopped it at 233. Okay, so now for the explanation part about how that program works and how all these modules are working together, um, I thought it might be better to look at a simpler example before looking at the full-blown Fibonacci um, program as an example. So the example that I want to do is just adding two numbers, something like 7 plus 15, and then outputting that number onto this display. And then we'll walk through each clock cycle and sort of see what this computer is doing to achieve that result. So let me start by programming in the program to the CPU, and then we'll talk about it a little, and then we'll walk through it. Okay, so I've programmed in the program already. So now what we should expect this computer to do is it's going to add, it's going to load in the number 15 to register A, and then it's going to load in the number 7 to register B, and then it's going to output the sum of those two numbers in the ALU into the output register. So then we should see, so what we should see is first a 15 will load in here, a 7 will load in here, and then a 22 should output here, okay, and in that order. Now, how does it actually do this? Before we run the program, before we step through it, let's just talk about how it actually does this, okay? Now, we can figure it out by taking a look at the instruction set, which is actually quite simple. This is the instruction set I've designed for the CPU. It's not a lot of instructions, right? There's not even 15, there's like 11 or something. Um, anyways, so the first two instructions of any, any instruction, okay, the first two micro steps of any instruction is going to be the fetch, because you have to get that instruction from the memory, move it to the instruction register before you can even start acting according to that instruction. Because how are you supposed to know that you're doing a load A and that you're supposed to be controlling all these lines over here to do a load A function if you don't even know that what you're supposed to be doing right now is a load A? So of course the first step of any instruction, of any command in this GPU, is going to be getting the command from the RAM, okay? And that's done in this fetch cycle, okay? so. The first part of the fetch cycle is program counter out and MAR in. And the program counter is keeping track of what instruction we're at right now. It starts at zero, and then when we do the first instruction, it increases to one, then two, then three, and so on and so forth, right? So what it says is PC out M MAR in. That means memory address register in. So we're taking the instruction, the current number of the instruction we're in, and we're go and we're setting that to be the address of the RAM, okay? So that means if we're on the zero instruction, we expect the instruction in binary for what we're doing on the first command to be at the address zero. So this way we can go, to the, we can set the program counter. When the program counter is zero, it can set the address to be zero, and then whatever's in the RAM will be the instruction zero. Will be the instruction zero, okay? And then we can load that instruction into the instruction register and then act upon it. We can the controller will take that information and act upon it and control all these different modules so that this way it's doing a load a command. All right. So we can go through this and we'll step through this and sort of see what we expect. 
Now for a load A command, we want to say load A, and then we have to give it the data that it's loading in, the address of the data it's loading in. So what the CPU does is it gets the load A command, and then when it sees that the current command that's supposed to be doing is load A, it knows that, okay, what we need to do is these last four bits, this is the address that we need to go to. So we need to go to that address in RAM. So that's what it does right here. It goes to that address in RAM. And then it takes whatever's in the RAM at that address and puts it into register A. And that's how a load A command works. So there's actually four micro steps involved in the load A command. You can see those here, right? So it's a lot more complicated than you would think. So that's what we should expect for the first four clock cycles. At the end of the first four clock cycles, we should expect a 15 in here because it will have loaded in register A. And then the next instruction that it's going to do is going to be a load B command. And the load B command is denoted by 0001 and then the data line. So then we say, okay, so then when the instruction register gets a 0001, it knows that we're doing a load B command. So then it knows, okay, go to this address in the RAM, get the memory that's in that, get the data that's at that address, and put it in register B. Okay? Now that's the next step. So let's first, we'll walk through this first one. So when I press this clock cycle button, we haven't done anything. This is, we're at the zero instruction before the fetch cycle. So we should expect when I press the clock cycle, okay, advance the clock one, for the PC to out and the MAR in. Now the program counter is currently at zero, so we should expect for the program counter to set a zero at the memory address register. Now we already have a zero here, as you can tell, because none of these LEDs are on, and that's just because we cleared the whole computer before we started anything. But after we do the clock cycle, we shouldn't expect anything but a zero. So let's press the button, and you can see we still have a zero. So now what the computer has done is it's gone to whatever, what you're seeing here, these blue LEDs are telling you whatever is in the RAM at address 000. zero, zero. And this is the assembly code, or this is the machine code right here for our load A command. It has the four zeros and then it has the data. It has the address for whatever the data is. So what we would expect on the next clock cycle is for these LEDs, whatever this is, to come down into the instruction register. And we can see that that happens, right? So now it's in the instruction register. So the CPU has successfully fetched the first command, okay? So now it has the first command, so it knows the first command is a load A because these first four bits are zero, and it knows that what we're loading into A is the whatever is in the memory at address 1110, okay? So the next step is for the CPU, it's gonna go to address 1110. So what we should see is 1110 will pop up here, and it will become the address that we're currently looking at. So let's accelerate the clock, and you can see that we've gone to 1110, okay? Now this is the data that we're trying to load into register A. Now what's here? Well, the data here currently is 1111, okay? Which is the binary um, value for 15, okay? So now we know that there's a 15, we, we have the 15 in the RAM, whatever the data is in the RAM. So now we wanna output this 15 into the register A. And it's gonna do that on the next clock cycle. So let me go ahead and advance it. And you can see that now in register A, we have our 15, okay? You can also notice that during that whole process, the program counter increased by one, okay? So now we're, the program counter is keeping track and saying, all right, we did the first instruction, now it's time for the second instruction, okay? So when we advance the clock, we should expect this number, this one, to go into the memory address register so that this way the computer can fetch the second command, the second uh, instruction. Okay, and it does that. Okay, so we can see that this one from the program counter is now in the memory address register. Okay, I don't know how well these LEDs are showing up on the um, on the recording, but I hope you guys can see it. So now in the RAM, these blue LEDs tell us the command that we're supposed to be doing right now, and this these first four LEDs tell us that it's a load B command. And these last four LEDs tell us that the data we want to load into register B is located at 1111, okay? So now what we should expect is that these, this value, this byte right here, should output right here, and it should go into the instruction register, okay?
All right, and you can see that it did that. So now we have the load B command and the red and the address for the data in the instruction register, which is connected up to this control unit. So it's telling us. So this control unit already knows. It knows we're doing a load B command. So now it says, okay, we're doing a load B command. So that means go to this address, this address one 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 one, okay, and find the data there. So what we should do, what we should expect on the next clock cycle is 1111 to show up here at the memory address register, okay, because that's the current address we want to be looking at. So we advance the clock cycle, we see that that's what happens, okay. We are looking now at the memory address 1111. The data here is the binary um, value for 7, okay, 111 is the binary value for 7. So now, because it's a load B command, we have the data at the correct address. We want to say, okay, load this data into register B. And that's what it should do on this next clock cycle. So let's go ahead and advance the clock. And bingo. We see that we have our three ones here in register B. So we have officially now the binary value of 15 in register A, the binary value of 7 in register B. Okay. And of course, during that whole process, the program counter increased one, so that this way, when we're done with this load B command, which we're done now, we know that it's time to do the third instruction, okay? So we should expect for this three, it's really two, to come into here, okay? And there we go. So now this two came into the memory address register, and this right here in the RAM is the machine code for the, our third instruction, okay? Because we did the instruction at address zero, we did the instruction at address one, now we have the instruction at address two. And this is it right here, it's a sum to out, and we have some random values in the last four bits, and that's because it doesn't matter, because with a sum to out, we're not interacting with the RAM at all, we're just connecting the ALU up to the output register. So these last four values don't matter at all. All, when the CPU sees these first four values, it knows what to do automatically. It's not going to need those last four. So what it should do is on the next clock cycle, this byte right here should load itself into the instruction register. And we can see that that happened right here. Okay, so we have this byte in the instruction register. Okay, so now the CPU knows that we're trying to output whatever's in the ALU. So on the next clock cycle, we should see 15 plus 7, which is 22, output onto this display because the CPU knows we're trying to do that. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. Okay, and you can see that a 22 loaded up into the output register. So we successfully added seven plus 15. So you can see that we outputted the correct number here. So I hope that this example helped illuminate a little bit about how the CPU modules talk to each other and how um, things actually get done in the CPU. Because as you can see, even a simple example of adding seven, um, seven plus 15 here was actually pretty complicated in terms of there's a lot of moving pieces for the CPU uh, to handle. Okay, so now I think we can talk about the Fibonacci sequence um, program because it's not too much more complicated than this program right here. There's another command, there's another command that we actually have to look at you because the Fibonacci sequence requires more commands than just these three here, which is load A, load B, and sum to out, okay? We are going to be using these three, okay? Another one we're going to be using is sum to RAM because we need to be able to save a value in the RAM, okay? And then the last one we're going to be using is clear PC, which is 1010, okay? Now what clear PC does is it clears the program counter and sets it back to zero. And this gives us a sort of loop functionality because we can say, you know, it starts at zero and it does commands one, two, three, four, five, or something, and then on the sixth command, we tell it to reset and go back to zero. So this way, on the next clock cycle, it starts doing the command that's at zero, that was at the, you know, the first instruction that we ever programmed into it. So this way we get some loop functionality. It'll go, it'll do instructions one through six, and then it'll come back to one, and it'll do one through six again, it'll come back to one and do one through six again. And that's sort of how we get this Fibonacci sequence to work, is because we can only add two numbers at a time. Okay, so then we add two numbers and then we make a pattern so this way it goes back and does it again. It keeps adding the numbers and we get the Fibonacci sequence out here. And we'll go over exactly the idea right now. So let me get a piece of paper. We already learned how to add two numbers, okay? So with the Fibonacci sequence, we're just adding numbers over, we're adding numbers successfully. So let's just 
let's just write out sort of what the Fibonacci sequence is, right? So we start off with a one and a one, right? And then we add one plus one, so then we get two. And then we add two plus one and we get three. Then we add th two plus three and we get five, then five plus three, and we get eight, eight plus five, 13. And this sort of goes on and on, right? So, I mean, I think we're all familiar with how, how it works. Um, but in a computer way, there's only, it's, it's honestly pretty simple about what we need to do, right? So let's just say that the A register starts with a one and the B register starts with a one, okay? So to get this first number in the sequence, all we have to do is say sum to out, right? Which means output the sum of A and B, which is two, okay? And then we'll display a two, okay? So we'll get a two, we'll get a two out, right? Well, now, to get the next number, we want to put this sum back in either register A or B, so that this way we can add 2 plus 1 and get 3. So, the way we do that is not just by doing a sum to A, where we say move the sum into the A register. What we have to do is a little bit more complicated than that. It actually takes two commands. We have to do the sum to the RAM at some address, okay? And the address I'm going to choose is 110. Okay, so sum to RAM, okay? So this way it's gonna put two in the RAM at address 1110, okay? Then what I'm gonna say is load A from 1110, okay? So this way the two that was in the RAM is now gonna go into the A register, okay? So this is how we load a number that we've just added into one of the registers. We first have to load that number into the RAM, save it in the RAM, and then from the RAM we can move it into either register A or B, okay? So now after this command has finished, okay, we'll expect A to have a 2 and B to have a 1, right? So we can do sum to out again, and that'll give us a third number in the sequence, sum to out, okay? And then I'll output a 3 because 2 plus 1 is 3. Now we just have to repeat this cycle where we move it into the RAM. Now we don't have to move it into a different RAM location because we don't actually care. We don't, we're never going to really need to see this 2 again. We're never going to need this 2 again. So we can load in our 3 at the same location, 1110. So we can say sum to RAM at 1110. Okay. And that will put this 3 in the RAM at, one, at address 1110. Okay, and then what we say is say load B from 1110. Okay, and that will give us A will still have its 2 like before, but B will load in this 3. Okay, and now you can see we're at this stage in the Fibonacci sequence. We have a 2 in register A, we have a 3 in register B, and if we went back and ran a sum to out, we would get a 5 right now. Okay, now the interesting thing about this is that if we keep going and writing the code successively to keep adding these numbers, it's just going to be a repeat of these, this block like this. It's going to keep going like that, right? So instead of just coding in each one successively, one after another, um, until we run out of address spaces, what we can just do is put a clear PC right here, okay? So now, it'll, when it gets to this command, it will clear PC, and it'll go back to sum to out, and it'll output the sum of whatever is in A and B right now, which will be 2 and 3, or 5. And then it'll go through the rest of this and load it into A and then load it into B, and then by the end of the time we're here, we'll probably be at 13, right? And it'll keep going through like this, and it'll keep doing this infinitely. It doesn't, the CPU we built doesn't have any sort of conditional statement yet, so it can't stop itself. We will have to stop it by pressing the, um, the clock cycle button, by, by halting the clock cycle. Um, but it will go through and successively automatically add through and keep calculating Fibonacci sequence numbers. Okay. So the first step here is to just give the CPU power, which we can do like that. Problem solved. Okay. We can have something totally random in the output register. We can go ahead and clear that. We've got to go through and clear everything. Okay. Got to clear the program counter. We've got something random in there. Okay, and it looks like everything else is pretty much set to zero. So, first, the first thing we've got to do 
is put in program mode, and we do that by flipping this pin up. And then we program in at address zero. What we want to program in is a load A command with one, because right now both these registers have zero in them. So the way we start this program off is by programming in a one and a one in each of the registers. So at zero, 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 we can do a load A command, right? And we can load in the contents of memory at just one, 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 one. Okay, which we'll set with a one later. And then for our second instruction, we'll do a load B command, which looks like this. Okay, and then we'll program that into the RAM. And you can see that now in the RAM we have, at the second instruction, at the second address, a load B command that loads B with the data at 1111. Okay, which is the same address. So we're having both A and B load data from the same from the same location in memory, and that's fine because we both want to load them with a one, which is the same number. So now we go to 1111, which is the address for the data, and what we gotta do is program in a one here. So that this way, when we run our first two instructions here, okay it will program in, hopefully, a 1 at register A and a 1 at register B. Okay, so we can get, go ahead and put this into run mode now. Okay, and we can advance the clock cycle so it goes automatically, and we can see it's going through all sorts of things. It's getting the 1, it's good putting the 1 here, okay? So now it should be doing the load B command. Okay, you see it's now it's got the 1 in the RAM, it's going to load that into B, okay. Booyah. So now we have a 1 in register A and a 1 in register B. So now we're good to write our Fibonacci program. If we write our Fibonacci program, just like we did here, okay, then now this is the now this is the assembly language, right? But if we write our Fibonacci sequence, if we program in our Fibonacci program here, we should expect it to go through and add in all the numbers and output them here and display just like we saw in the beginning of the video. Okay. Now the way we do that is the first command at 0, 0, 0 is going to be a sum to out. Okay, so we can go ahead and, well, let's put this in program mode. Okay, another thing we want to do is we want to clear each of these, okay? So the micro instruction clock, we want to clear. Program counter, we want to clear. Okay, so now at 0, 0, 0, at all zeros in the program counter, or not in the memory, okay, in the RAM, at all zeros, we want a sum to out command, which is like that, zero, zero, one, zero. So we can program that in. You can see that I left a one here, right? There's a one that's still high. And that's because it doesn't matter, right? These last four bits don't matter at all for a sum to out um, instruction because we don't care about the RAM at all. So now at one, which is our second instruction, we can program in a sum to RAM which should load whatever the sum in the ALU is into the RAM at address 1110. Okay, we can write that command in using this line. Okay, so now it's going to write the sum to 1110. Now, in our third command, which is number two, right, at address number two, we want a load A command, right? So that's what we said. We did sum to out, we did sum to RAM, now we're on load A. Okay, we want to load A from that same memory address. Load A is a all zeros, four zeros. This is a load A command. And then we want to load it from 1110. So this is correct. You can go ahead and write that in. And now our third instruction is in the computer. We can go ahead and get to our fourth instruction here. Okay, which is going to be a sum to out. Okay, so sum to out is just like this. And we can write that in, okay. And then our fifth instruction is going to be a sum to RAM, and we're going to output that to one 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 zero, which is see one 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 zero, okay. So now our fifth instruction is in there. Let's do our sixth. Our sixth will be a load B command. Load B is like this. Bingo, this is load B, so now it's telling us to load B from 1110. All looking all correct. Good, good. Program that in. Now we can do our final command, our seventh command, 
which is going to be a clear PC, okay? And this is the one that's going to tell it to clear the program counter and go back so that this way on the next instruction it's doing the sum to out. So this is it. So we to program that in, we can put it in here. This is the code for it. 1010 is a clear PC. Program that in. Okay. So now we should be good to go. We can put this in run mode and we can advance the clock and we should see that you can already see that it did the first instruction. We got a two out here. So it should be going through now and calculating the Fibonacci numbers for us. This is, I'm re-recording this, but this is, should be exactly the same thing that we saw in the beginning of the video. Um, but now we've just programmed it in. So I know it took me a while to finish the CPU, and a lot of you have probably been waiting for this video for a long time now. I mean, we started this series in like 2015 or something. So I hope you guys, I hope it's worth the wait for you guys and that you guys learn something. Now, if you want to see how we did this, if this is the first video that you're seeing, you want to see how we built the CPU from start to finish, you guys can check out this playlist right here. It's like 35 videos long or something. It starts all the way at the beginning of like what is logic gates, what are AND gates, and takes you through what is binary, all the way every single step of the process to where we're at right now with a finished CPU. Now, if you don't know any electronics and you want to get started in some electronics, maybe not build this exact type thing from the get-go, but maybe some more basic electronics, I would recommend checking out this video right here where I go over how I got started in electronics. Um, also, I'm still working on those beginner kits that I said I was going to make for you guys. Um, I'm sorry that it's taking so long. I'm really just trying to make sure that everything is perfect for those, um, but they're getting close. Um, besides that, just make sure you guys follow us on Twitter at amtech underscore circuits to get all the sort of updates happening with the channel. Um, if you guys have been following us, you know that this video was coming, so make sure you guys are following us there to get all the updates. Um, besides that, please like this video if you liked it, and subscribe to see more content like this. My name is Kiel Mohadeen, and I will catch you guys in the next one.